Hey there guys, so today we have another update. Um, you might see, I, I actually just reviewed this beer and uh, Mark C actually asked for some uh, comments and tips on uh, sort of Vermont and all that good stuff, so I thought I'd do that. Obviously while I'm enjoying this incredible beer. And man, that is so good. <laughs> I, sorry, I have to roll past the fact that I'm enjoying this beer and actually talk to you guys. And so, um, I just did a sort of a Vermont update talking about the beers I would review, but here, this is a video talking about um, sort of the logistics of going to Vermont. So, uh, first thing, uh, I'll just sort of tell it through my experience of uh, what, what, my, what my most recent trip was. First thing you want to do is probably look at uh, the Hill Farmstead website. Uh, Sean Hill is aggressive, I, I assume it's him, that's always updating the website. I mean, it, you can see updates at like 1 or 2 a.m., um, always updating the website, so oh, just look for on the website, what is on tap or what bottles are, set, uh, are available. Depending on how picky you are, uh, plan your trip around that. Um, obviously, some people plan it around uh, the, their bottle releases. Flora was a reason why my friend wanted to go, and therefore I, I, I tagged along. And um, I recently went for Aaron because I was in uh, Montreal, drove through Vermont that back down towards New York. And uh, so, yeah. You know, Burn Barrel Age, uh, Barley Wine, geez, like that's the first one. So look out for what kind of crazy cool bottles they have. Or the other move is to look for these kind of um, when they have available like one or two case limit kind of saisons uh, available. That's always a cool, cool move. Um, not that you should buy all that beer for yourself, but, you know, being able to pick a case or two up means that, you know, you can like share it with friends at don't plan on doing that trip, and that's really um, very cool. And so talking about uh, going to Hill Farms at itself, um, it is hard to get there. I mean, it is literally the middle of nowhere. And for me, you want to wait online as least as, uh, online as uh, uh, the shortest amount of time. And so therefore, I recommend going around towards closing. Let's go 3, 4 o'clock. I've noticed that around that time is when the, the brewery uh, slowly... Uh, slows down a little bit. The line is a little bit less intense and I've left the brewery around three four o'clock And all of a sudden I see the line being so short. And I'm like, whoa, I just waited so long I just waited like, you know, expect to wait an hour to two hours I'd say I've waited from an hour and 20 minutes to two hours in that range uh, Yeah, and um, so it's just a long wait So preferably you wait a little less you prefer to wait probably an hour an hour and 20 minutes compared to two hours so uh, later in the day is better, usually. Um, going before opening is going to be a long wait. I believe someone posted that they were waiting at the brewery since 10.30, and the brewery does not open till 12. So they waited an hour and a half, and they still had to wait online. So they're probably waiting two hours plus, I want to say. And so there's Hill Farm said for you. Um, talking about food options. Um, Hill Farm said might recommend Parker Pie, which is 20 minutes north of uh, Hill Farm said. I don't actually like that place. When I travel, I try to have food that I personally enjoy and maybe I'm just a picky New Yorker because we do have great food in New York, not to say that you guys don't have good food where you are, but I'm pretty picky, you know, I'm slightly a foodie kind of person and their food was, no offense, garbage. Uh, <laughs> to call what they were serving pizza was, I mean, it was like almost, it, it was obviously not frozen pizza, but it was on level with that and their sandwiches are garbage. I, I mean, sorry if I'm, sorry if I'm putting down Parker Pie so poorly. They, they have an awesome staff, it's an awesome space, their tap list is incredible. So I'll give them props to that. But great food. It's more about props to great food, not putting Parker Pie down. Go to Waterbury. Prohibition Pig and the Reservoir are incredible meals. Definitely do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a picky New Yorker, and I thought their food was awesome. So you get, definitely go to Waterbury. And a move you can do if you're driving, obviously, I assume you're driving from south because Vermont's all the way up there. Um, you can go up to Waterbury, then Hill Farmstead. So go, you can go to Waterbury first, and Waterbury, as I said, has Prohibition Pig and Reservoir. Unfortunately, they're not open for lunch other than Friday and Saturday. Prohibition Pig is only open for lunch on Friday and Saturday. So in between um, uh, Reservoir and Prohibition Pig is a place called Arbads. And uh, it was a random restaurant. We were like hungry and we had nothing to do. We didn't realize these restaurants were closed. So like, all right, let's go to Arbads. Arbads is a simple American uh, menu. And they do have a great tap list. I was able to try uh, Fiddlehead Second Fiddle from them. And shout out to Fiddlehead. They're putting out their mastermind and Second Fiddle, I think are puts them in the category of, you know, number four brewery, as in, you know, like Hill Farmstead, Lawson's, Alchemist, like, you know, the big three. 
I think uh, Fiddlehead is putting their 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 you know their name up there because they're so good. Those two double IPAs are absolutely world class and very much Hill. For, I mean, Vermont good. Uh, they're not you know regular good. They're Vermont good, if that makes any sense. And they also had Heady Topper cans. And so speaking about that, talking about Heady Topper, uh, getting Heady Topper is it's very on and off. The, the website, uh, the Alchemist website, is. Great. You need to go on that website if you're looking for Heidi Topper. Um, it's just so good about posting, you know, if it's a restaurant that you can get the beer at, whether they're selling cases, whether it's a beer store, what city is, uh, it is, uh, what city you can get Heidi Topper, uh, what days that these stores are getting the shipment. Great website. So we end up doing that and getting a few four packs of Heidi Topper. And um, Actually, just ask people that you see because you're going to see a train of people. You're going to see the same people at the same stores. It's like, oh, you're at this store now. Get the Heady Topper. Then go to the other store. Oh, you're here now. Because like, it, it, what happens is that they sell probably like one or two four-pack limits. And actually, really nice. You can just ask them like, hey, where else are you going for Heady Topper? Because not everything is posted on the website. So people might have information that you might not have. And actually, someone offers some unsolicited advice. We were just waiting online. He's like, hey, are you guys going to this place? There's more Heady Topper there. And we're like, oh, wow, this is really nice of you sort of help us out uh we ended up turning it down because you know for the beer karma gods we were just like we've had enough heady topper we bought a few four packs hopefully someone else gets it so that's always very cool and um so yeah there's my recommendation so you got the food in waterbury that's always good the heady topper hunt um the logistics of you know when to go to hill farmstead um oh speaking about logistics uh, bring your growlers uh they only take this size growler or the um yeah, a 64 ounce growler, sorry. I don't have one right in front of me. But yeah, 64 ounce growler, um, the regular quote unquote growler size. Uh, you can bring those, they'll, they'll take your growlers, just make sure you clean them because they do actually aggressively try to make sure that you don't have a dirty growler. And um, I've, I've like, you know, did, uh, did that thing beforehand. I, I checked out my growlers, like holy smokes, this growler smells like old beer and it's disgusting. So I, I, you know, you get some hot water, it gets a little bit of soap, you, soap, you sh shake it up, make sure you clean your growlers because they will not fill your growler if it's gross. So, uh, and you have to buy a growler. That's not too bad. It's about like five to $10, uh, three to $10 for a growler. So until next time, guys, cheers. This is a Vermont update. Later.